Hello, Auburn, and welcome to the Auburn Board of Health meeting. Today is Monday, February 5th, 2018. I'd like to do a call to order. And the first thing is to review the agenda. Is there anything we'd like to add or remove? Uh, no, I don't. I think we're, uh, we're all set right now. Yep, all set. And we're looking to approve the minutes from the June 12th, 2017 meeting. And those, um, those minutes mm -hmm. are um, uh, presented to you. Uh, mm -hmm. Paula did finish those up. Okay. And you can take a peek at them. Okay. I, even if I was in another one. Um, I think um, as long as you're not a, a voting on them, mm -hmm. I think as long as okay. a, a motion. Okay. Okay. So I'll make a motion to approve the minutes from June 12, okay. 2017. I second that motion. I'd like to make a motion to approve the minutes with the notation that um, Mr. Gauthier, Ray Gauthier, who was also in attendance at this meeting, is no longer here at this meeting. Sure. We'll duly note it and accept the minutes as. As, uh, as noted. Okay. In favor? Aye. Thank you. I can't vote. Yes, you can't vote. <laughs> so I, I, I vote for myself. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Very good. So, first item is the hearing. I'd like to open the hearing. It is now 6.03. And this is the oh, hearing. We actually may oh. have to. Oh, uh, there's going to be someone in attend. Oh, we have to wait till 6:05 to yeah. get a chance to uh, get here. Yeah, 6:03. So if we could okay. just wait a few minutes no on problem. that. No problem. Absolutely. I'm not sure if the requester is going to be in an attendance. But we need to give them a but chance. Yeah, we just want to. Absolutely. Give them a sure, of course. Right. We may be able to um, uh, go through. Um, it is a shorter meeting. Okay. Um, I do have the communicable disease report. Sure, we can take a look at that. Sure. Curious. There's much clue after all the. So actually, we this is the report we got um, from the nurse. So it gives you an overall total. It does doesn't oh. give you the breakdown. Oh, I will have the breakdown for you um, when she submits that. Oh. That's priced, I guess. Yeah. 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 I take it my question. <laughs> Finally. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Good question. Okay. So obviously noted. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Surprises there. Thank okay. you. Thank you. Okay. And I mean, do you have anything um, that you wanted to invite um, for the food? For, uh, you know, we just went through a renewal, so I'm happy to say that all of our establishments have completed all their paperwork and renewed, so we don't have any outstanding. Oh, good. Um, we, we are starting to resume all of our food inspections with our new food inspector. Um, that's going well. That We had a temporary event last weekend, Dancing with the Stars, and we had um, also the... I, don't, I, I haven't been here for a couple months, so we did the holiday craft fair, and now we have upcoming uh, Special Olympics. Mm -hmm. So we have about four of the big um, events um, that the, the actually uh, Kristen Pappas runs, the town runs, and the next one's the Special Olympics. So we're busy pulling everything together and starting off a new year, but um, other than that, I don't have any new establishments. Okay. I don't really have any problematic um, things going on with any of our restaurants. So the two that were outstanding, they finally yes. got it. Yes. Yeah. We did, um, through the process, we did find that a business changed hands, and that business used to typically 
get permits for the two spaces they rented, and that's not the case anymore. The new company that took over wanted the two establishments to get their own permits, so we're actually handling them as if they're brand new establishments to the town mm -hmm. and having them go through the floor plan and all the different things that they need to present to us. We really only had that from the old storage company, so we didn't have it from their individual businesses. So um, we're working on that and um, getting them so that there'll be two more establishments. Okay, very good. Okay, I think we're so, so, good. Good. so it's now 6.06, .06 and I'd like to open the hearing for the solid waste abatement request for Six Hilltop Farm Road for the applicants Nadine and Stephen Kowalski. And the reason for the abatement of request was they were billed for 52 weeks of trash pickup in 2018 and will only have 51 and requesting for rebate for the one week of trash pickup. And I see here that you've supplied some, so I guess this is part of the evidence. Sure. Okay. Um, so, um, uh, Ms. Iglowski um, had contacted me um, at the time of the um, cancellation. Um, I believe it was um, on the 3rd of January. And um, she is the resident that lives at Six Hilltop Farm. Um, and she uh, was calling regarding um, concerns for the uh, trash being delayed. Um, so as you may or may not remember, we did have um, some significant storms um, in the month of January. Um, and I, uh, I supplied you with the notifications that we had sent out through Code Red and um, the town website notifications and so forth. So typically if they're just in general, um, if there's going to be a snowstorm of significance that is going to cause um, trash service um, to be canceled for a certain day, which would then cause a delay um, in the schedule, the town um, coordinates with the management at Republic. They'll let us know whether or not they feel that um, it's going to be safe um, to do the pickup service or if they need to make um, arrangements to um, delay the service um, and cause a delay in the trash. Uh, so for this particular um, storm, uh, Wednesday, January 3rd, um, we had sent out a notification to the town on the trash collection service and I think that's the first notice that you have in your packet. So uh, there was going to be a storm that was coming in on Thursday. We sent out notification on Wednesday um, to let people know that the uh, trash service was not going to be picked up on Thursday. Um, what makes this kind of a unique um, situation is that we were already on a holiday delay. So that was um, the week of uh, New Year's. So New Year's Day was on Monday, so we were already on a one-day delay. So this was going to result in further delay. So um, no easy way around this. Um, so the normal Monday delay on New Year's um, went to Tuesday. Tuesday went to Wednesday, Wednesday to Thursday, mm -hmm. and so forth. Because we were going to have the cancellation of the service on Thursday, um, that left um, that left no other days left in the week besides Sunday in order to have trash picked up. So to continue on that path, um, Wednesday's service would normally be picked up on Thursday. Um, however, with the uh, the trash being delayed for that Thursday, um, as it stated in your um, in the code red message, Wednesday route that was scheduled for Thursday was now going to be picked up on Friday, the next following day, and Thursday route, which was previously scheduled for Friday, was now going to be picked up Saturday. Mm -hmm. I know it's very confusing. No, no, no. You have I, to, I, you yeah. know, almost just think of what what's going to happen. Right. So that unfortunately left the Friday people. Um, to be delayed until the following week. So that 
obviously caused a, um, a, a delay in service. However, they had agreed, Republic had agreed, that um, they would pick up the double week of uh, trash. Right. So the service would still be provided. However, it would be delayed right. until the following Friday. So the Friday customers, obviously, um, we did hear from, um, from Friday customers yeah. um, that had expressed concern or had needed some um, uh, some help in just figuring out why we were why we were yeah. delaying um, due to um, contract and um, DOT um, regulations with the truck drivers and the amount of hours that they can work in a in a work week um, they were not able to work on Sunday because mm -hmm. that was probably the most commonly asked question why can't we just delay one day and then just pick it up on Sunday so that the whole week could be taken care of. Unfortunately, due to requirements um, for um, their workers, that was not able to happen. Sure. Um, <clears throat> so we had um, sent out this notification on Wednesday. Mm -hmm. um, there became um, some uh, concerns about whether or not the Friday customers would if they had overflow trash if they would then have to pay for the blue bags mm -hmm. obviously we did not want to cause any more inconvenience to the friday customers um, we did a following statement um, shortly thereafter later that day to let the friday customers know um, that blue bags would not be required for their trash um, the overflow for um, for the two weeks could be um, put put out and mm -hmm. Republic would pick that all of the trash up. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> so this is all occurring on a Wednesday. The Thursday comes, we have a very significant storm. So Thursday into Friday is all cleanup. Um, Saturday comes, um, they have, um, they have uh, um, the service happening on Saturday and then the following Monday, we have further discussions with Republic to again try to ease some of the people's concerns because now if people didn't happen to see the code red or they um, were not looking on the town website, they're not understanding why their trash didn't get picked up. So we received calls the following Monday. Um, we were in contact with Republic to try to mitigate how we could make this easier for the customers and Republic agreed to drop off a 30-yard um, dumpster um, at the highway department to be able to offer some relief for those Friday customers. If they didn't want to hold on to their trash, they could come to the DPW and, um, and get rid of their, their trash. So obviously the, the snow caused, um, caused delay um, and there was um, things that were out of our control. Um, we tried to give the residents um, as many options as possible to try to mitigate the inconvenience, yes. um, but also identifying that the service would still be provided. <clears throat> so that's, that's an overview of the, um, the delays and the notifications that we sent out. Um, we posted these on the town website, cable access, social media, um, all the normal um, places that we um, uh, normally post. Um, and then I believe we also had a um, uh, electronic sign board at the, um, at the DPW, um, also letting people know. Um, so that's kind of the overview mm -hmm. for, that, um, for that first week in January. Um, so let me, um, let me just tell you um, about the request that we had received from Ms. Iglowski at Six Hilltop. So um, she had contacted me um, and expressed concern about um, the Friday uh, trash being delayed. Um, she did not feel that um, it was uh, it was fair for the Friday customers to have to wait the two weeks, um, and she felt strongly that she should not be charged for the service, um, and <clears throat> wanted to have me um, change the billing um, from 52 weeks of uh, trash um, solid waste service to 51. 
Um, I explained to Ms. Iglowski that I was not able to change the billing, but offered um, that we could um, send her an abatement uh, request form um, to her um, for the one week of trash pickup. Um, and uh, we, we did that. So we sent out the um, request, we received it back, um, and we scheduled her, her for this meeting. Um, I did um, get a um, billing number for, uh, for Six Hilltop Farm. So uh, Six Hilltop Farm Road is a single family um, home and um, this is the assessor's card um, listed as a single family. Um, so they are requesting um, the abatement for um, one week of trash and for a single family home, um, the trash fee is $108. Um, billed twice a year, so the total is 216. <clears throat> so um, 216 divided by uh, 52 is four dollars and fifteen cents. Um, so that's what um, the trash fee would be for one week of um, trash, and that is um, what Ms. Uh, Iglowski would be looking for um, and again the trash um, the the trash service uh, was delayed by Republic but the service was still provided um, or available uh, correct right. we did have the um, the option for the DPW option was available um, for for residents if if they wanted to they didn't have to, but we felt it was uh, it was an option that people could bring their trash down if they wanted to. Um, and I might also um, just let you know as well um, that in our solid waste contract there is a uh, force majeure clause, and <clears throat> I can read it if sure. you would like. It's um, Basically, there's um, protection in the contract so that if there's um, a weather event or something that is an act of God or unforeseen, that the um, Republic, being our solid waste um, collector, um, is not held responsible. So the force majeure um, contract um, clause uh, states, except for town's obligation to pay amounts due to contractor, any failure or delay in performance under this contract due to contingencies beyond a party's reasonable control, including but not limited to strikes, riots, terrorist acts, compliance with applicable laws or governmental orders, fires, bad weather, and acts of God shall not constitute a breach of this contract, but shall entitle the affected party to be relieved of performance under this contract during the term of such event and for a reasonable time thereafter. Mm -hmm. um, so that clause um, is put in there um, and is applicable to this weather event. Um, do you have questions for me? I just, I can't remember myself with my own bill, but I'm just curious um, for the twice a year billing. Does it say on there 26 weeks or does it say biannual? Um, the, uh, I, I don't have a I copy of curious. the bill in front of me, um, but that's a, a, a good good question. Um, the the um, fee, the trash fee is for the service. Yeah. Um, it, I don't believe that it identifies the number of weeks on I the bill. I don't believe it did. Either. But I can certainly, um, I can certainly I, check on that for I think that's okay. I, I didn't, be, it's not going to change my mind greatly, but I didn't believe it did either. Um, when I saw that, I should have looked at my own, but that kind of was where, what I was thinking. I didn't believe it did okay. either. I just remember thinking it was a biannual billing statement for a service, as you said. Mm -hmm. 
just because of the way this was worked. That's what I was thinking. Okay. Do you have any? I can certainly, um, I can follow up with you. I, I don't think it would really. Would that delay the hearing, though? Yeah, I, yeah. I mean, I think we continue it. I, I, I think I pretty much have my thoughts. What, how I feel about this. Yes. To, you know, based on especially your last statement. Right. I can just get one out of this thing, right? Do you think I just did? I don't know. I'm ask. If you don't mind, we can see if the assessor um, can get a copy of the bill for you to see. We can. Do you have any other questions? Um, no, no questions. I mean, the evidence is that thank you for. Um, yeah. The, putting forth all that you have. I mean, certainly, um, this was an unforeseen act. You can't plan for everything. Services were available. Um, yeah, I agree. This is an act of nature, and we can't control that. Um, notifications were made. Mm -hmm. um, as much as unfortunate as it is, um, you know, I think we'll just do the due diligence and get the, the bill like you had requested, and then I'll sure. make a motion. Sure. Okay. I agree. Yeah. I think um, Republic and the town did a lot to try to alleviate um, the, everyone's situation. And I mean, we we certainly <clears throat> there's um, you know there's always room for improvement. If there's you know suggestions that um, you know to be made, we are continuing um, to look at um, you know how we may be able to improve the situation going forward and we certainly recognize trying to get um, you know the word out in many different mm -hmm. um, many different modes um, and unfortunately it, it it's a situation um, just to put it in perspective <clears throat> because um, people may say well you know we always have holidays um, but the frequency of this happening, right. um, I believe, uh, was, <clears throat> I think the manager um, identified it. Ha it's happened twice in maybe 30 years um, mm -hmm. to him. Um, and uh, we did also put together a, a Q&A to try to help people understand um, what the process was, mm -hmm. so that I think I included that in the, in the packet as well. Yes. Yep. So right. to try to answer people's questions about why they couldn't pick up on Sunday, um, mm -hmm. why um, why was this happening to the Friday group people? Um, what have they done to try to um, make sure that this won't be happening? going forward, I mean, we are we are continuing to look at how we can improve the situation, um, but unfortunately, with with uh, with storms, you know, you don't always <laughs> have that um, right that control. We we do service delays, um, you know, with storms on a typical basis. This just happened to be during a holiday week um, when we're already on a. a um, a one day delay so um, you know I think having the option for people coming to get rid of trash you know we try to try to alleviate some of it <clears throat> right. do you want to um, uh, do you want to sure. put that one on hold for a yes. minute yeah mm -hmm. Put that on hold and just move forward with. Okay. Is there anything else on the agenda we need to discuss? Um. Yep. The um. Uh. Tristan La Liberty is here mm -hmm. for the plastic bag mm -hmm. discussion. Mm -hmm. Um. He he uh, is here to present some of his research. Um. I think I hear Eileen, so mm -hmm. maybe <laughs> maybe she might have it. That's what I was just trying to. If we can get a quick answer, then. Yeah. <clears throat> Oh, fabulous. Thank you, Eileen. All right. So we have a bill here. So it looks like this is a copy of the bill. 
this ha this is not obviously the same address. No, no, no. It no. looks it, it's reflected as a single family home. So over here, that, I mean, you obviously get the bills. Yeah. But that, um, small. This is for the yeah. small toters. Yeah. These are going to be for the regular size toters, and then two family, yeah. three family, and four family. So These are the rates. Yeah. So it's this really is what you're billed for twice a year. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So it's not yep. even really like a six. Uh, yeah. <clears throat> okay. So that. So I think much given much. this. Um, this, this information and the evidence that you presented um, in regards to this abatement request is that the town was already in a um, an odd situation with this already being on a one one day hold um, because of the New Year's holiday um, during a and then of course on top of that there was the snowstorm with DOT restrictions we have contractual restrictions of the trash hauler um, there were no other days available. Um, and accommodations were made. I think the town and the the licensed hauler was more than accommodating with a 30 a dumpster, waving the blue bags. Um, and again, we're dealing with an active nature that isn't um, all. You know, we, we, can't, we can't predict. We can't plan for everything. Um, so, and I would um, also note that the the requests of the abatement are not present in the audience either um, to to be heard. And I would make a motion that we deny the uh, the request for the abatement. I second that, and I okay. make a motion to deny the request. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. The discussion for um, uh, regarding single-use plastic bag prohibition uh, bylaw proposal. Mm -hmm. So um, in the um, in the fall, um, mm -hmm. we had um, uh, received a, um, a proposed plastic bag um, proposal um, from Tristan, mm -hmm. and the board had um, reviewed it at that time and um, wished to um, discuss it after the um, the new year. So um, uh, I had been in contact with Tristan, and Tristan has been um, uh, busy collecting um, information from other towns and um, was gracious mm -hmm. enough to come tonight to be able to um, uh, present what he has um, what he has put together since the last time he was here. Tristan? Um. Hi, so I'm sorry for that. That was a really rough draft. Even now, I'm still working on it, so uh, forgive me for the many typos I'm sure that are in there. Um, so I've just been doing a little bit of research, contacting other towns that have a ban, um, figuring out what the reason is for a ban, specifically what the damage is from plastic bags to the environment, um, and then seeing what kind of effects a plastic bag ban has on the towns or um, really the retailers within the town that implement the bans. So I guess I'll just uh, go over, um, start with why, what the effects are of them, and um, if there are any questions, just throw them out there as I go, and I'll try to answer them. Uh, and if I can't, then uh, I'll be looking them up to include them in this report, because this is what I'm going to bring to the board, hopefully at the end of the month. Um, and I'm sure they'll have the same questions. So just real, real quick, our, our job at the Board of Health is just going to be the enforcement piece of this if it passes. Right. So, yeah, that's actually um, in those packets that's already there, um, how many towns or how towns actually enforce uh, the ban. The majority of towns use uh, the Board of Health or Health Director, something along those lines. Yes. Should we just talk about that piece tonight? Because sure. that's, I mean, as far as hearing the whole thing, I mean, you Probably you still have to go through the board. I'm assuming this has to go through town meeting for approval for a bylaw change and all that stuff. I'm assuming you're still in the beginning processes of this and stuff. Yeah, whatever we can see, yeah. you can go over. I think if, if our job is just the enforcement piece to just pare it down and, and talk about the enforcement piece for the board of health. Sure. If um, if we can just clarify, um, Tristan, were you planning on um, looking to the board to pass the regulation or? just be the enforcement part of it and have this go through the OS and um, and 
obviously if it goes through BOS, it needs town meeting vote. Um, and then, as Eric is saying, have the enforcing agent be the Board of Health. Right. Or, so, go ahead. yeah, uh, sorry. Um, yeah, I was hoping to have the Board of Health support when we go to town meeting. Um, I don't know if that would come before or after the Board of Selectmen actually votes on it. Uh, but that was the end goal. Okay, so you're not looking for the Board of Health to pass this as a regulation. It would be a BOS yes. by law. Mm -hmm. Sure. So I think okay. if we just hear about the enforcement piece of us, that would give us, because I mean, that, that's, what our, that's what your mm -hmm. role is going to be, is the, or the enforcement piece, because mm -hmm. we'd be with everybody else listening to, the, to that. So I think that if in the interest of time, and just to kind of pare this down, there's a lot of information here and everything like that. You did a good job of initially, you know, talking to us about that, providing us from the packet. Um, but I think, you know, the enforcement piece is really what is going to be affecting this office and this board. So I think that's what I would like to hear about the most. However, can I can I just ask a question? Sure. I, I assume that you're it's important for you in your when you're looking to go to the BOS to be able to say, however the um, Board of Health is behind me in passing this bylaw. Is that mm -hmm. correct? Right. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So I guess as a group we need to be sure that we're all mm -hmm. that this is what we want too is Board of Health. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I That's think I do. I, I just don't know where everyone else stands. Yeah. And, and I just want to make sure that I don't want to mislead Tristan if, if other people don't feel that way. That's all. And I think this, um, uh, when Tristan uh, and I had corresponded, I think this would be pretty much a, uh, basically an introduction yeah. to what um, he is uh, proposing. And basically, the board will need some time, obviously, yeah. to. Um, to take it in, yeah. to process it, and figure out if this is something that the Board of Health supports as a board. Um, and I think Tristan is here to explain how that would affect um, Board of Health and, and what our duties would be right. with the uh, with the regulation. Yeah. My, oh, yeah. I'm sorry, by law. By law. <laughs> yeah. My only, yeah. I was just saying, because my only hesitation in the whole beginning of all this was, as a board, the three of us, I didn't want to be the ones saying to the whole town that they had to do this. But I like the what your overall plan is, that it has a little bit more broad um, way that has to go about being implemented. That, that for me, is fine. Yeah. Okay, so am I just doing the... Um well, mixed up. Now, just the enforcement. I know, sorry. We confused you, Chris. <laughs> I can focus on whatever is easiest for you guys, whatever you prefer. Um, and just enforcement uh, is something that I've talked to a couple other people about. Um, That's fine, the enforcement. I just, I just wasn't 100% clear about what you were looking for us, too, in terms oh, okay. of, like, you wanted that. It was important that we all had to buy in that this is 100% what we wanted because you wanted to be able to say all three of us were like, yeah, we definitely want, you know, I didn't know what ethically... You know, felt or Steve felt, etc. Um, yeah, there's a, a third person, another person, um, Clint, who's actually worked with enforcing it in his hometown, mm -hmm. um, and he couldn't make it tonight. We had actually tried that, but he would have been really good to talk about enforcement. Mm -hmm. But he's certainly available via email if there are any questions come mm -hmm. up that I can't answer. Um, so, like I said in the packet. Um, Enforcement is almost always done by the Board of Health. Mm -hmm. um, occasionally, town administration or police. In the bylaw that I've drafted, it's only the Board of Health uh, as far as enforcement goes. Um, some of the enforcement policies that are in the, this draft, and they can all be changed too. That's, I mean, obviously nothing set in stone yet. The Board of Selection hasn't voted on it, uh, and I haven't even proposed it to them yet, uh, this draft. Um, actually, is there a copy of the draft in that? There might not be. Now, um, for the, um, uh, were we going with the draft that you had last time around? Yeah, I've changed it since then, but most of those uh, regulations should be the same. This is going to be the one that I've had since September? Yeah. Um, I'll okay. just take Here. a quick peek. Yeah, Look it over. Um, the purpose has changed just to be more specific. Um, Do you want me to make some copies of that draft? Yeah. Thanks. Thank you, Tristan. So. I wasn't sure. I, I sent just this to the board, so I apologize if, um, if no, you that, intended for me to send that. That's well. okay. I don't even think I uh, I had sent the most updated version to you. Okay. When you asked for things. Yep. So, sorry about that. I thought it was included in this one. Um, 
So is it safe to say um, to the board, this packet is um, pretty much your, um, your reasoning and your drive of why you'd like to see with right. some supporting, um, supporting information of what he's reached out to other towns, is that? Right, it goes yeah, into the evidence and, and yeah, oh. why, why we'd want it. Um, mm -hmm. uh, some of the things in here are just, uh, you can see the first offense, what other towns typically do, um, as far as charging uh, a fee. Most towns, 62% just for the first offense do a warning. Mm -hmm. So that's what this bylaw does for Auburn, it's just a warning. Yeah. Um, this one also, it may not be in the original draft, but in the latest draft that I've written, gives 14 calendar days to correct the violation after a warning. So if a business uh, doesn't hear about it in time, mm -hmm. they'll get a warning 14 days later. Um, they can either come back to the board and apply for uh, an extension for some time to get rid of their existing stock of plastic bags. Uh, and if they don't do that, then the second offense, uh, for as far as this bylaw goes, would be a $25 fine. So that's again 20, uh, 14 days after the initial violation. Tristan, can I just jump in? Yep. So can you give a, an example of, um, in, in I'm sure, you know, Clint has probably explained how it worked in Bedford for him, but can you give an example of what, like, a, um, a violation would be? So, um, how, how would that occur? Okay, yeah, I'm sorry. I was going to, like, logistically <laughs> walk me through, like, yeah. I own the convenience store or Shaw's or whatever. Mm -hmm. I can't even have these out. Like, yeah. I, I can't have them. I can't dispense them. So, um, yeah, the plastic bags can't be given out at all. Um, so they don't use. even exist. Right. Okay. Um, unless there are exceptions in here if they're biodegradable or marine degradable um, or compostable. Um, the, I actually was talking to uh, Chairman LeBeau from Shrewsbury. Now they had implemented this ban through town meeting uh, by citizen petition. Um, and one of the problems that they had with that is it required it to be compostable, marine degradable, and biodegradable. It had to be all of those. Mm -hmm. There isn't anything on the market that is all three of those. Yeah. Uh, so retailers were upset because they were looking for something that doesn't yet exist. So after talking to him, I made this one so that it can be either or, uh, whatever's easiest for a retailer um, to find. And did they have to modify their um, their bylaw, Tristan, in order to um, so that people could no uh, they it? they didn't uh, modify it. So Shrewsbury still stays as uh, it has to be that. I guess the push from that, or the reason that the citizens had written it that way, and they did it on purpose, uh, is to encourage um, someone to try to make it. So oh okay to try to create a demand for that kind of product. Uh, a couple other towns I think have done that too, that have gone by citizen petition but haven't actually been through a board of selectmen or a process like this. So I took that out right away. It just seemed like a real inconvenience for retailers. Uh, so once he told me that, I was sure to take it out. That actually might be in the original draft, too. Okay. Um, so, right, so this will ban all single-use plastic bags besides those exceptions. Um, they will be allowed to use paper bags uh, as long as it meets the standards that are in here. And the standards are the same as they are in that original draft. Um, actually, you have the, the most updated one now, but, um... So we walk into, um, so say for example we get a complaint, and I'm, I'll just throw something out there because this is typically how we, we, we get a call um, and somebody says, you know, I just went to Shaw's and they're, um, they're packaging up my groceries and plastic bags. I thought plastic bags were banned. Mm -hmm. Can you check that out? So yeah. that that might be a call like we would get into the office. We go to Shaw's, um, and I'm just I'm honestly just using them as a, mm -hmm. a as an example. Um, we go to Shaw's to investigate the concern, and then what would happen at that point? So any bag that is any one of those things uh, that's an exception would have to be clearly labeled. Okay. So if it's not clearly labeled, then that would be a violation. Okay. Um, so if it's, I mean, it might be that it's compostable, but it just doesn't say that on there. Mm -hmm. um, it would have to say that on there. I can't actually speak to how you can tell the difference between just from actually seeing it, if it's compostable or not. 
um, that would be a question for Clint, and that's why I wanted to bring him in here, because he's actually been able to go about that and see the difference between biodegradable and non. Um, but I, I think that most of them will say uh, that it meets the ASTM D6400 standard, um, which is for compostable. So you think that there's there's a retailer out there that will actually have that um, that labeling on there? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, because the other towns have actually uh, used them. I was actually talking to one retailer in um, Auburn that also owns a business in Shrewsbury, and once the ban went into effect there, they switched over to biodegradable bags. Um, I'm not sure how that worked because Shrewsbury's ban requires it to be all three. Um, I think they might have gotten a uh, exception by or variance. permission variance, yeah, yep. from the Board of Health in Shrewsbury once they realized that something like that doesn't exist. Mm -hmm. um, I didn't push it further to see how they were actually able to, but I know that's something that they did. Um, so those products are up there. Um, and then the ideal situation is uh, people would bring their own reusable bags into the store with them uh, once you know they realize that they can't be getting a plastic bag at the store, or they can, it would just be compostable or biodegradable. Uh, the ideal situation is they'll bring a reusable bag in, either offered at the retailer uh, for a price or something that they've already bought. Uh, and, and that would be the best case scenario because it's for the environment anyway. Um, and for the retailer too because they're not spending the money on the bag. Tristan, what, what, what form of enforcement would we have to carry out if someone was bringing plastic bags maybe they obtained it from a town that doesn't have a ban, mm -hmm. and they were reusing them as a reuse, reuse like it's Shaw's is reusable. Yeah, that's actually a, a clause in here, um, specifically saying that a retailer, I mean, have to find it. Um, anyone can bring whatever bags that they have personally. Uh, prevent, I saw that's yeah. what brought, that's why I brought the question up. Yeah. None of the regulations for a customer for bringing bags of any kind into retail establishment yeah. for their own use. So if that was happening, we would not be um, carrying out enforcement. Right. There would be no enforcement on this end, on either the retailer or okay. the, the resident that was using the plastic bags. They can bring whatever they, they Whatever want. they choose from wherever they got it. Okay. So the, um, uh, say for example, the um, retailer does in fact have um, have plastic bags that do not meet the meet the requirements in the um, proposed bylaw. Um, at that point, we would, I mean, I I'm guessing, if this were to move in that direction, I'm guessing some sort of educational um, component, which sounds like. Um, that you laid out in your introduction of the um, of the proposed plan, whole educational piece I'm thinking is happening before you even get to that stage. So you can be educating retailers with, I'm um, sure, um, a series of meetings, hearings, mm -hmm. um, uh, paperwork that we would send to business community. Um, contact with uh, the business community chamber. Um, there's a whole number of um, outreach that we do with business community that we could um, speak to them, you know, obviously to identify what the band would, I, what the band would be doing. Right. Correct? Right. Um, that was actually the biggest problem when I talked to people in Amherst, Shrewsbury, um, was actually trying to sit down with retailers and explain to them. Uh, that was the biggest problem they had. It wasn't obviously people uh, purposely violating the bylaw, it was just they weren't aware of it. Uh, Amherst went into effect almost immediately. I think they gave, like it was a three month period, it was very short. So it was a, a quick switch up for retailers that weren't ready for it. Um, Shrewsbury had a little bit longer, I think they had the six months, which is what I, I put in this one. Um, but with that time, you spend going to retailers and explaining it. Um, oh, another problem that Shrewsbury had that we'd hopefully avoid here is because it was through citizen petition, um, the town wasn't aware of it. So the town was learning as the retailers were learning. So there wasn't a whole educational piece ready to go. 
Uh, the town had to prepare it, and by the time they prepared it, some time had already gone by, and the businesses weren't as ready to adapt. Um, so I'd hoped to avoid that with Auburn by doing this. Uh, talking to you guys before we actually go forward with it. So if it does pass, uh, we get jump on it and start uh, Can reaching I ask out to who Who's the enforcement in Shrewsbury? Uh, I think that's also the Board of Health. So they are, even though it was a citizen's petition, mm -hmm. the board is enforcing it? Right. Yeah, I mean, most places were the Board of Health. Let me check quickly. I think you did identify that Shrewsbury was the Board of Health. Um, and as far as, um, I, I do like the um, pictorial you gave. Is Shrewsbury the only um, the only town in Central Mass right now that has um, that has it in place? It looks like there was one other. Yep, there was Grafton and Athol. That also have similar bands. Grafton has a. Okay, so Grafton does have. Uh, it only, in Grafton, it only affects businesses over 3,000 square feet, but they do have one. Um, and then Athol, I believe, just has the same one that Shrewsbury has. Yeah, they do. Okay. Um, so those are the three towns in Central Mass right now that have it. Um, right now I'm talking to residents in Millbury and Oxford that are trying to go by citizen petition there as well. And have you, um, have you spoken with, um, the town, any town representation at mm -hmm. this point with those towns? Are they, um, how do they perceive it? Yep. So I reached out to, um, Paxton, uh, Charlton. Oxford and uh, Millbury. Oh, and Sutton. Um, most of them weren't really interested in pursuing it at all. I did get a response back from Millbury and Paxton. Um, Paxton only has one retailer that actually uses plastic bags, so they did, they met with me but decided not to go forward with it because of that. Um, and Millbury invited me to come in uh, and talk to them about it. Um, they seemed receptive to the idea. Uh, they had their, I want to say it was the recycling committee, look into it and actually put together a report. Um, I should have included that in what I gave you because they did put something together. Um, it was very small, just a list of pros and cons. Um, <clears throat> the board decided not to pursue it from them, um, but said that if a resident wants to do it via citizen's petition. And that's when someone reached out to me uh, and said that they were interested because they had seen it at the meeting. So that's where they're at. And, and these are boards of health you've approached, or boards of That was a board of selectmen, yeah. So, so I guess, the, do either, uh, any of you three have any concerns with doing the enforcement part of this? Is this going to add to your workload? Is it going, it's going to add to it significantly? Uncharted, really. Yeah, you don't uh, know. Yeah, I mean, uh, it's so new in Shrewsbury, and, you know, they certainly probably have a uh, larger establishment base but we don't really know what the enforcement will be and how long it will take. I think um, that it's it's important to understand how um, I guess how it would be, would be presented and whether or not you'd have to you'd have to get information out there and, and get feedback. Um, to understand whether or not the community as a whole is supportive of this, um, because I think it is—it's an important piece. Mm -hmm. If people are not interested in having this conversation, then um, you know it makes it a little bit more challenging for us in in the roles that we have. I think a big piece of this is understanding um, what the business community um, feels like, and I think that. Um, you know, in this introduction, mm -hmm. it looks like Tristan has definitely started reaching yeah. out to mm -hmm. businesses in Auburn um, as part of his research. Um, we, as the Board of Health, obviously we do enforcement on a lot of different aspects 
Um, we enforce state regulations, local regulations, we pass regulations. Um, so enforcement is not something that is foreign to us. Um, it's part of what we do. It's a matter of identifying how this works. You know, this is not, um, it's not like it would be the first town in Massachusetts to do it. You know, there's 60 other towns that are doing it. It would be helpful to see how other boards of health are handling it. And I think that, um, I think Tristan is uh, alluding to the fact that he has been in contact with, it's, it's Bedford, right? That uh, Clint is from? Is it Brooklyn? No, what is it? Um, I might have a list. Clint of, uh, Richards from Sierra Club. Oh, okay, in the Brookline, Brookline Recycling Brookline. Committee. Um, so, um, I think that we would have to have an understanding of what exactly we would be responsible for, and I see this as um, you'd have to present it so that there's a huge education piece before you even get to um, banning any anything, because if you're not explaining um, the why and the how, it would be difficult for us to come into you know the ninth inning to say, oh by the way, you can't have that bag. And now people are like, what? You know, you can't have retailers um, deer in the headlights. You'd have to roll out a whole educational piece um, to explain how the regulation, or I'm sorry, I keep saying regulation. Um, if the Board of Health passed it, it would be a regulation. If the BOS um, um, proposed this, this would be a bylaw, proposed bylaw change. So you'd be um, going to town meeting. Um, and I think that you had said that there's a mix. Some boards of health pass this as a regulation where, where yeah, other I think town, it's more, oh, sorry. Uh, go ahead. I, I think it's more common that they've done it by citizen petition. That's yeah. just the most common. Yep. Um, a couple towns have done it through the Board of Selectmen, and then a few have done it. I think it's just a handful of towns that have done it by Board of Health regulation. Yeah. So, citizens petition, if they do that, are they out there doing the educating to uh, try to get people on board? From what I can tell with Shrewsbury, it didn't happen. Uh, it didn't work out that well, just from talking to the Board of Selectmen there. Um, or it didn't happen as, as much as they would have wanted it to. Is there is there anything in between um, or steps that some towns have taken before they get to the full ban? Like, is there store participation in recycling or, I mean, I know that Shaw's does a good job mm -hmm. at that, but have there been any other towns that have proposed um, kind of a building blocks, if you will, until they get to the ultimate ban? Um, nothing like that. Nothing where they'd be required to bring, I don't know, recycling bags back or bags mm -hmm. back to be recycled. Mm -hmm. um, what some towns have done is um, delayed it so uh, you can have the first year or 12 months after it passes, uh, it'll affect businesses over such and such size uh, and then businesses under that size will have an additional six months um, things like that have been done um, but there's nothing it's that either, I've seen it's either 100 percent ban or yeah or 100 percent use so you're saying that there's exemptions um, or maybe a, a more delayed timeline for um, for small businesses to be able to maybe use up their stock and have more time to comply with the regu for with the bylaw right and, and a reason for that, a big reason for that, is uh, you're encouraging people to bring reusable bags mm -hmm. because there is a slight increase um, from using paper bags. Uh, some of the research that I was looking at was from California where the difference in price between plastic and paper was huge. Um, I looked at it around here by talking to some retailers and it's not as big, I think, just because a lot of fresh water is used in the process and that's more readily available here than it is in California. But um, all oh, right. So reusable bags, uh, that's the whole goal is to switch people over um, to those. The paper bags are a little bit more expensive for retailers. So when the initial switch happens, retailers switch over to paper bags and now they're spending more uh, on those paper bags until people start to bring reusable bags, then they're spending less because less people need bags. Uh, so I guess what the delay is intended to do for smaller businesses is they don't have that immediate shock from consumers that now need the paper bags. Consumers are already used to bringing reusable bags, so they don't have to hand out as many bags. Um, and that's 
what I can tell is really the intent behind uh, the delay for smaller businesses. Just as more of a comment, ironically, there was a, did you see the article in the paper on Saturday? There was, um, it was more about um, a con uh, committee on environment and natural resources voted 13 to 1 t for banning plastic bags, but it has to go through more. But I didn't even realize that in December, Boston Mayor Marty Walsh um, banned single-use plastic bags that will start next December. So in Boston, they're going to... And yeah. rolling that out in oh, Boston. So, so Boston did oh, move yeah. in that yeah, direction. Boston oh, okay. was the most recent one. Yeah, they're included in this, uh, actually. Mm -hmm. So some of these towns that are included in my 61 haven't actually gone into effect yet, like Boston. Okay. Um, because, but they've already been passed, and they're mm -hmm. going to go into effect. And so Shrewsbury was probably the one that was um, that just went into effect six months ago, that in July. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they're the most recent. Um, I think I read somewhere that Worcester, too, is considering um, they're bringing it before the city council at some point mm -hmm. uh, to weigh in on it. So. so I I do think, I mean, to answer your question, I hate to not answer it, but mm -hmm. I think it it's unknown, you know. I, I do think that um, definitely Tristan has done a lot of, a lot of research, and mm -hmm. I think he's continuing to do that. I think we would have to have a better understanding, um, possibly speaking with, you know, people that have already done it, and I think he, he does have definitely some contacts um, for towns that have done it. We'd have to ask questions, and we'd have to see if this is um, a direction that the board wanted to support. Um, you know, I, I, I don't want to speak for you, but I think you're asking for the support of the board, yeah, right? Uh, yeah, okay. yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> one thing, I did talk to the um, health director in Amherst, and she said that uh, <clears throat> when Amherst went forward with the ban, they uh, had had a hard time, you know, reaching out to businesses. But since then, um, they've just incorporated checking this uh, regulation or this bylaw with everything else that they've done. So they're uh, was it a yearly check. Um, yeah. So twice a year. Twice a year. Uh, when when uh, the Board of Health goes out, they incorporate that yep. into their inspection. Yep. And they just check it then um, to make sure that businesses mm -hmm. have been up with it. So. Mm -hmm. I do, um, and correct me if I'm wrong, but in just in kind of reading it and, and thinking about how other towns have done it, I do think the heavy lifting, I would imagine, and maybe Clint, um, uh, Clint could tell us uh, if this is right, is going to be in the beginning of getting this going, yeah. you know, so you'd mm -hmm. have to do, you'd have to do the education, you'd have to see, um, you need kind of a lot of hand holding for uh, making sure that people understood what was allowed, um, where they could get them, because I think a lot of the times people will, even when we're doing just, um, you know, regular food enforcement, a lot of times people want to do the right thing, but you may say, well, you need to get, you know, a certain type of, I don't know, um, certain type of cleaner to be like, okay, well, where do I buy it? Well, we can't tell you where to buy it, but we can tell you what it needs to be. You know what I mean? So you'd have to have at least some resources for businesses to be able to say, okay, how could we comply with a proposed ban? Mm -hmm. um, and having educational material so that it's not, you're not adding onto already a heavy, um, a heavy responsibility, mm -hmm. you know. So you get businesses educated, um, you get the resources out there. Um, obviously, the first, I would imagine, the first year, year and a half, you're going to be dealing with a lot of um, people either not complying or getting uh, going through the enforcement part, and then bringing people on board. Um, once that is in place, I would think that it, it's probably easier, but up front, you, you're going to have, I think, probably a, a lot more time than down the road. Yeah, that's probably true. Um, <clears throat> one of the towns that I talked to that did it really well uh, was Natick. Um, I think it was, the, I want to say it was the health director from Natick that I talked to also. Mm -hmm. um, but they essentially did um, this where they got uh, places where you could buy bags that would fit with these standards. Uh, they went to the businesses, they had help from the Chamber of Commerce when they were drafting the bylaw um, and 
so they were all on the same page as it was happening. Um, and I, I think it was really successful in Natick. Um, so I really liked the program that he had. I've thrown that in. I don't know if it's in the memo that I gave you guys, but I since then I've added the quote. Mr. White. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah it is. So yeah, <clears throat> they did a, a very good job. So I, I think if, if I'm hearing the, the, the employee, employees right, is that you know, there's still a lot more information that we need to garner on exactly the logistics of how they're going to enforce it. Enforce it. It's not a foreign concept to them. However, it's going to add work to their day. Um, another step to a few inspections and stuff like that. So I think we still need more information on that piece. I think moving forward as far as the, for the Board of Health to support the entire bylaw, I don't think that's our job. I would because there's potential fees to the consumer on this. Um, I mean, certainly in theory, anything that's going to better the environment, decrease you know pollution and stuff like that, sh sure. But as far as something as as broad as this, where fees could be passed on to the consumer, I would caution us on taking a stand on that. That's why when I first we first came, is I wanted to narrow it down to just the enforcement part, because that would be our job. Um, and because I, you know, I, that's that, that's how I see it. Unless anyone has an, anything else, um, because I think the board of selectmen in town meeting are the the groups that would deal with the entire bylaw, um, and they would be the ones hearing from their constituents. They would be the ones hearing from the businesses, um, that type of thing. Um, I think the answer that needs to be from this board is strictly in the enforcement piece, um, and I think we still need more on that and maybe a, a draft plan on, on how to do it or even suggestions from you folks on if this was to happen, this is what we need to have happen in order for us to do our job. Mm -hmm. okay. um, so what I'm thinking as far as enforcement goes, uh, you really just need the resources that businesses can turn to. Um, I, I don't know what else um, you might be looking for in here. Uh, a lot of the enforcement policies would already be covered, um, such as what the fee would be, um, which is a warning, and then the lowest fee uh, that there can be, um, how long that they have after the initial fee, um, and then when it would go into effect. So uh, beyond resources, what, what more would you recommend? I think it's more of a discussion that you, you folks could have. I mean, I, I think, you know, that's, I want to make sure that you guys are happy first, as I, far because I don't know what 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 you'd be up against. Mm -hmm. You would know your job a lot better than we would, as far as you know. This is what we would need to have happen. You know, and I think if we're here to support you to to make to make that happen. You know, I don't want to come in here and and say, you know, I I, I work in, in medicine. I don't want to come in here and tell you how to do an inspection. Mm -hmm. So I think you know that that my, that's my job is to our role mm -hmm. here is to is to support you so I think that's a discussion mm -hmm. without us that you guys could have um, and just un until you're ready and then you know God, we're ready to do this and then we can just su uh, support the the enforcement piece only um, of this I think that would be the, the better avenue to go um, I and that's something question. that simply could be done over email or you know something like that so okay. just a quick question Tristan so the charges that were in the kind of the initial thing we got email and they're not specific in here. Does right. that mean it's just because it's not specific in here, or that part of it is not going to be in here? Oh, okay. Well, when you said uh, charges to consumers, were you thinking of that in uh, the I th Well, I just saw it. Because, he, yeah, that yeah. was, some towns have done that. There are four right. towns in Massachusetts that, that have what actually. you were concerned about when you were saying about passing the law, or were you thinking of something else? Well, it, it doesn't, it, right now, it doesn't, the urban bylaw does not have a fee. Um, right. But again, you know, but it could be that the retailer could charge a reasonable fee per bag, um, so that would be done at the register, I'm, I'm assuming. Right. A retailer can do that now anyway if they, mm -hmm. if they wanted to charge a fee when uh, it's just become customary that they don't charge a fee that the, the bag goes, goes along with whatever the purchase was. Right. Right. The current bylaw that I've drafted doesn't have that, and I wouldn't recommend putting a mandatory fee in. Okay. Um, I was say you used the word mandatory a couple times, that that's an option. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, four towns have done it. Boston, that just passed theirs, includes a mandatory fee, uh, I think, of 10 cents per bag, any bag that's used. So anybody that goes in that wants a bag, they automatically get 10, 10, 10 cents? Right, they have okay. to charge. I think, 
I think a couple of businesses in Shrewsbury have done that willingly of their own. They've done that to bring back some money that they've lost from using paper bags. Um, but that's not a requirement in Shrewsbury. That was just on businesses. Um, but yeah, I, after talking to a bunch of retailers, it seems that that was a really unpopular idea that they don't want to charge customers or be forced to charge customers. So I wouldn't recommend that the board throw that in. But I wanted them to be aware that that's something that's been done. So I included it in the memo. Okay, in the memo, but not yes, part but of not the bylaw. Right. Yeah, because I right because that when you were saying about yeah supporting that you didn't want to support a charge too. So I just wanted. To I mean, um, I, I I do respect the fact that you know. Um, you're not looking to add more to the plate that we can't mm -hmm. handle. Um, certainly, we don't. Um, we don't want to be in charge of enforcement if we can't do it mm -hmm. um, correctly mm -hmm. um, and responsibly. Um, so, I think having um, an understanding of how it would work and how it works in other towns—that's certainly a conversation that we can have. Um, not necessarily at a meeting, but with Tristan, and I know he has um, contacts, people that basically have done this in other towns that may be, um, you know, more progressively um, or aggressively um, looking at bans. Um, I think that it's a matter of figuring out exactly what we would be responsible for, um, how we would go about it, um, and just how that works. Going through like the, um, uh, just examples, you know. I, I would want to see examples of how other towns handle it, what problems have come up, because you never know sometimes until you're in it. Um, mm -hmm. When you are issuing somebody a citation, and then they'll come up with, you know. And these are the things that I'm talking about. Sammy, yeah. there's a lot more unanswered questions that I think yeah. that, you know you got the, the four of you could have mm -hmm. without no. us here. Without you know, we don't need to do it at a board meeting. And I wonder meeting. if they could estimate, if they could, somebody like Amparst, how many hours per week, if they have any idea, if they spend enforcing it, tease that data out. I don't know if they can. I'll ask them if they um, usually get uh, many reports about it. I really don't think that they have since they've been doing it. And like I said, they included it in their biann biannual. So, it was, um, so they're just doing it along with that. So the only extra time that they really spend on it uh, would be if they got a call reporting a, a retailer. Um, from the towns that I have talked to, the problems that they've said have come up <clears throat> is, well, Shrewsbury had that problem with, we're telling them that they can have a bag that doesn't exist. Um, so they got pushed back for that. But the other problem that came up is just they weren't aware of it, uh, mm -hmm. which is why I included the, there's 14 days in between the warning and the next one. Um, some towns did seven days, um, but I really wanted to give the, the two weeks uh, work because it's a learning process. Uh, and I really can't see retailer purposely violating the bylaw. So um, tried to give it the most that I could. Uh, and those are the problems that people have told me about the towns that were I think that the initial rollout if the um, if so if you propose this to um, BOS and then it goes to town meeting um, I, I think just having an understanding of whose responsibility it would be to be able to educate obviously once the bylaw is passed it, it it kind of falls into our lap but I do think having you know, an educational campaign and who's going to be doing that, um, if that's the role of the Board of Health um, through, you know, the through the um, approved bylaw vote, then we would want to give ourselves the tools to be able to um, take it forward. But just, I, I imagine there's, you know, people that are um, passionate about it that may want to see it in town. Those same people may be um, like yourself, going out, speaking with businesses, um, trying to get into the business groups and roundtables and so forth to be able to talk this out ahead of time. And we don't need any. Uh, do we need a motion on this at all or anything like that tonight? This is just a discussion. No, this was so just think that basically was, yeah. an introduction. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I think that, you know that, like I said, I think it would make better use of everyone's time, you guys, and, mm -hmm. and everything with just. You know, and involve us until you're ready, you know, final and everything, and we need to vote on whatever it is that you you need or whatever, and just have the discussion on, you know, 
I think it'll make easy, life easier for you and certainly you guys as well. Mm -hmm. and, and I, and I may offer, we have a solid waste advisory committee that obviously mm -hmm. we've done, um, we've done uh, the recycling regulation last year um, and we've made progress. So this is a board that works well with the solid waste advisory committee and um, something that I think may be um, helpful for you to, you know, speak with them as well um, since these are discussions that they, they have right. had, have happened. So if the board is comfortable with that, we'll continue yep, discussions absolutely. with um, Tristan and um, and work with the Solid Waste Advisory Committee to um, kind of talk about how this how this proposed um, this proposed bylaw may work. What is your timeline for the bylaw? When are you going to present to the BOS? Um, my plan is not this coming meeting, but the meeting after that. I think that's February 26th. Oh. Let's see. Double check that. On a calendar. Yep, 26th. Um, so bring to them for the 26th, and then hopefully, if it passes their town meeting for May 1st. I can't remember, but you have a solid waste meeting coming up, right? Yeah, I'll have to check the, um, the date. I know, I know we do have a solid waste meeting in, uh, in February, right? Yeah, February. So I can connect you, with you on that. Okay. All right. Any Anything else, Tristan? Um, that's all I have as far as enforcement goes. Um, yeah, I'll reach out and see exactly what resources we have available to you know, buy bags from that that work. The good thing is most businesses in town, in town already use paper bags that conform to the standards. Um, Shaw's has already do. Uh, the businesses that I went to in the Auburn Mall, I walked around there to see the ones that use paper bags already conform to it. Um, I think maybe with a handful of exceptions that just don't say recyclable on there, but otherwise it would. Um, so paper bags are fine. It's only really uh, going forward with a, a biodegradable or something that a business would look for. But we can definitely get a list together and do something like that. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Tristan. <laughs> All right, so I, um, I don't believe we have anything else, right? Okay. Make a motion to adjourn. Adjourn. OK. And I second that motion. Uh -huh. All in favor? Bye. 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 <laughs> awesome. Thank you. All right. Thanks. Thank you. Uh,